morning, everyone. My name is Ranjit. I work with Manage Engine for the last uh, seven years now. And I'm going to talk about the, uh, the future of workforce in the identity and access management. When we talk about the future, it's AI everywhere, right? Everyone is talking about AI this, AI that. The idea behind the artificial intelligence is it's some kind of a, you know, a superhuman, a supervillain, uh, like Ultron, for example. It can be a bad thing, but as Mr. Mahavir Singhvi said, it can also be a wonderful aid for us. And that is where I would like to start my presentation today. Right? I'm going to show you how the artificial intelligence is going to help us in the identity and security parts of our businesses. Right, so before I begin, I just wanted to, uh, I just want to let you know that uh, the, the whole idea of the, the identity and access management is going to uh, talk about you know, creating users, modifying users, making users, uh, making users you know, basically talk about the identity, right? When these users are following under a proper, how do you say this? When these users are being properly identified, are we following a zero trust model, for example? And zero trust being always verify and make sure that you don't trust anyone in the organization's uh, point on business. Right? So when we talk about the modern day attacks, what are the new age, new age attackers uh, basically are capable of? We have the adversarial machine learning. We have data poisoning attacks, identity spoofing attacks. And these are just basics, right? So and we are going to talk about model inversion attacks and supply chain attacks. And out of all of this, the supply chain attacks can be very dangerous because those are the guys that you trust. Those are the guys basically help you with the, the entire, entirety of your, your service provider. So they can be either an internet service provider, they can be an identity service provider, they can be a service provider at the end of the day. And them being attacked eventually lead you being attacked. So, so these modern day attacks can be very crucial and sometimes irrecoverable, irre basically in terms of damage itself. You cannot recover from these damages, unfortunately. And that's where I would like to start my session. And that's where I would like to talk about the augmenting of your identity hygiene. There are three important steps for every organization to make sure their identity and their security operations are hygiene. The first one being the identity hygiene for better cybersecurity immunity. What is that? You might have users, your, your security team might have users who no longer work for the organization. You might have users who have left the organization, but they might still hold on with some powerful roles. Like for example, some of you might be working with the Active Directory, I hope. And in that case, there is, there is a group called Domain Admin. There is a group called Enterprise Admin. You might have known this. How many domain admins and enterprise admins need not exist anymore because they have left your company? Are we monitoring any practices to remove these users from your environment? Are we revoking those identity from these users? Are we having any options to do an automation and provide orchestration in terms of identity and access management? Ladies and gentlemen, ask this question, yourself right now. How many of us are currently making measures, starting steps to protect that most valuable commodity, the most valuable commodity in our environments? And you might wonder, is that gold? No, basically that's more valuable than a gold, which is considered as the magical word called data. You're holding gold mines to these attackers and they are constantly being threatened with the lack of cyber hygiene, identity hygiene. And that's when we need to start implementing these preventive measures. Can you get sick if you are having proper vaccinations, for example? No. So that's exactly how you're going to protect yourselves from the cyber attacks as well. You just make sure you're prepared in case of an event, proactively as well as reactively. That's the idea. And also, finally, always ensure that you're strengthening your identity and your security posture. Where do I stand? As an organization, it's you 
who's, who are basically representing today, you lovely people or your organization, where do you stand in terms of your security posture? You decide where you currently stand in terms of your security posture. That is the entirety of this idea, right? All right, so that was supposed to be a GIF. It's just one of your poor IT admin guys, unfortunately, right? They have to reset passwords. They have to create groups. They have to uh, add someone to an application. And then they have to make sure your environment is secure as well, which is the most <laughs> visual representation of how an organization currently stumbles in terms of their cyber hygiene altogether. Now, this is where we need to start adopting, adopting pardon, to the, the artificial intelligence. It's like, you know, having two hands are never enough in terms of these attacks or in terms of these preventive measures altogether. And that's when we start augmenting ourselves. The cyberpunk universe always talks about having an augmentation to all of us, right? And that's when you're going to talk about the artificial augmentation of your organizations, where, going, going to, where we are going to do an automation on, on different scales of our businesses. We are going to talk about real-time monitoring. You guys, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to ask a question on how many of you guys are using Macintosh and how many of you guys are using Windows. Right? That's going to cause a debate on its own. And I don't want to start a rile up on here. But how many of you are currently aware that there are two important parts of your laptops, which is either called as event viewer, or in terms of Macintosh, called as syslogs. Those two parts of business, those two protocols, those two applications define what's happening in the environment. If someone is being created, if a user is, is no longer being able to log in, its user's password expire, all of this information, a user has been added to a privileged group, an escalation in terms of privileges, Lateral movements, all these jargons boil down to the real-time monitoring part. If you don't do that, unfortunately, right? If you don't monitor your events in real time for say, that is going to be monumental. A mammoth of problems soon fall about and then they cause a domino effect in terms of you know cyber attacks as well. So that's when a real-time monitoring is most crucial in terms of business. Reducing false positive is also a part of the AI altogether. Because when human beings work, we are going to find out more mistakes, right? In terms of how, or more problems rather, more threats. But how many of these threats are valid? How many of these threats should I pay attention? Is this worth of my time that I'm gonna spend for it? That's when we need to start using AI to reduce false positives altogether. Finally, it's like a child, the artificial intelligence, the application, or any method that you're going to implement where you are its tutor. You are going to train the, the artificial intelligence. So make sure you do train it with uh, deep learning and complex patterns, regular expressions, for example. I'm just gonna talk about the most important aspects of the business, in terms of the cyber hygiene itself, make sure you have single sign-on. You might have administrators writing their passwords on a sticky note. That's a no-no. You should not have such environments in the environment. So, so in this case, what stops them from doing that? If you think in the larger picture, single sign-on makes lives easier. So we start out adopting to that and we prevent casual handling of the passwords altogether. Endpoint management, monitoring, and security tells us how our environment are being secured host by host, node by node, ensuring that all of our computers, all of our systems, all of our firewalls, new generation firewalls, for example, are protected. Self-service capabilities. You don't have, and we talked about this on our previous session as well, right? Uh, social engineering attacks, right? So how does that work? I'm going to pretend that I'm one of your administrators and I'm gonna offer a password change. How do we protect that? How do you prevent that, pardon? Simple, you enable self-service capabilities. The user can do their own password resets 
then there is no need for a third party to get involved in terms of password resets. And that's when the self-service capabilities come into play. Constantly provide identity, security, and analytics in your environment. Run, make sure you run these analytics at least a month or thrice a month to make sure, weekly in this case, to make sure your environment is, is prevented. This example can be access certification campaign. Please look up. That is one of the most crucial things an organization can do in terms of identity hygiene. Make sure you have the network of observability as well. Make sure that you have an ITOM solution right, to ensure all the traffic that goes through your network goes through only through your eyes, not through a Wireshark, for example. All right, and then we have to also talk about simplifying the workforce and identity management. Make sure you conduct identity risk assessment with the help of AI. Access certification campaign, as I said. Active directory cleanup. Make sure your users are always being cleaned up when they're not a part of your business. Compliance report. I hope you don't submit compliances, but if you do, the entire idea of the compliance is to protect your gold mines. Your gold mine being your data, the data that your organization sits on. These compliance or these regulations are designed to make sure you constantly monitor how and whom access your information. Also make sure your identity is orchestrated on a, on a regular basis. Make sure you have an API integration, for example, to make life easier with the help of AI. And this is conditional access. Quickly, what is the conditional access? As the name suggests, right? The answer is actually in the name itself. You access based on a condition. Am I from Mumbai? No. But can I access a server in Mumbai? Yes, but only if I meet a certain condition. Only if I'm from a, a certain geolocation. Am I allowed to access a server in the United States? Yes, I can. Only if I fall under a specific firewall. Right? Only if I am a part of a specific client application. That's the idea of a, a conditional access. If you guys are using Azure, conditional access is already estimated. But for the on-prem, find an AI-driven solution that lets you do that. And finally, block access when they don't meet a specific condition. Governance and risk uh, identification, or basically the compliance, is to make sure you perform all of these on a regular basis. This is not a third-party compliance. The governance, risk, and compliance is something of a practice that you should start preaching to your end users as well. Do you guys know the 3 to one backup rule, by chance? Anyone? This is an open-ended question. If you'd like to answer, that's fine. 3 to one backup rule? It's okay, no problem. All right, so that's the 3 to one backup rule. You will have three backups two versions of that backup, and one offsite backup, all right? So that's the three to one backup rule. Always backup, always backup into three copies, have it in two different locations, and have one at least in offsite, meaning outside your company. Why? In case of a situation, you will have one backup at least that you can restore that has been etched outside of your business in the offing, that's the idea. Just going to let you take a picture of it if needed. It's basically just how I've been talking about, what I've been talking about rather, pardon, and how you weave the identity fabric altogether. Done? Thank you. All right, so in terms of API, Make sure your application is also supporting applications such as Webhook. Keep that in mind, because Webhook supports more than 18,000 integrations. So make sure an application supports Webhook. You might use an HRMS application. You might use a, a third-party identity, identity application, a single sign-on application. Make sure they support Webhook 
so that you ensure that your artificial intelligence learns and practices this as well. There are two types of AI, the generative AI and the agentic AI, right? A generative AI is the one that you use, for example, ChatGPT, right? Open AI. It's pretty cliche, but we have to talk about it. The generative AI is when it starts generating beautiful pictures, generating content for, uh, <laughs> for, for presentations. But the agentic AI is the one that we need for businesses. The agentic AI acts as a trainable model. This, this or these models train on what your business happens, where your business happens, and how do you solve business-related problems. So make sure you use both of these artificial intelligence, but more agentic artificial intelligence. Finally, the identity hygiene ensures that you provide identity governance and administration, privileged access management, access management, and with all of these threads woven into a beautiful fabric, which is your identity hygiene. Your organization can define business goals. Your organizations can define measurable impacts and values as well. So make sure your organization follows these rules and these eight important lines of business. Please take a picture if you'd like to. That includes overall efficiency, your security and digital experience convergence, and more on. All right, so we have been trusted by more than 280,000, 30,000 active business users, been in this business for more than 25 years, Manage Engine, Zoho, and we are having a footprint over 190 countries, and I represent Manage Engine, I'm proud to do that as well. We are made in India, Jai Hind, and we are made for the world. That's Manage Engine in a nutshell for you guys. Mm -hmm.